How many blinds does it take to screw in a light bulb? Just one. Welcome to today's episode of We Can Do It Too. I'm your host, Jennifer Jordan, AKA Bench Press Betty. And today I'm gonna to help give you guys the confidence and know-how to install your own ceiling fan, just like this one here. So let's get started. Today we're gonna to be installing a Hampton Bay 52 inch ceiling fan, the carriage house edition. So the first thing you wanna do is open the box and remove all of its contents. Make sure when you're going through everything that there is nothing that appears to be damaged, dented, that the shades are all intact before we begin. And most important are the instructions. As far as items go that we will need, a Phillips head screwdriver, check, or you can also use a power drill if you want, a little bit faster, an adjustable wrench, or specifically a 716. Some electrical tape and wire cutters and then a step ladder. All right, step one will be to confirm that we have the power turned off. The easiest way to check is to make sure that our light switch is switched to off. Another way that you can check too is to flip breakers. Go to your breaker and then you can switch on and off each one until you find the one that turns your light switch off. Okay, so once you've established that there's no power coming to the outlet, you can begin your work. A little bit of the basics, if you have a new construction or like what we're doing where we're house flipping, you will just have the outlet box here with the wires exposed. If you're swapping out an old ceiling fan for a new one, you'll likely want to take your instructions and disassemble the existing ceiling fan, starting with the bulbs in the shade to take it down before you install this one. And you'll wanna remove the existing base plate that the old ceiling fan had installed because chances are the new ceiling fan will have its own base plate and no two are often alike unless you buy the same model. To install the base plate to the ceiling, to the outlet box, there are two holes here. It typically comes with two screws. And so you will make sure which side is going to be the bottom. It's typically the side that has the hook here. And you will feed the wires through the hole. And then line them up. This is where you can use your trusty screwdriver. Or if you wanna work a little bit faster, you can use a drill. This is a Porter cable. Leave it a little loose on the one screw before you screw in the other screw. That way you can center it. You have a little bit of room to wiggle. You'll want to make sure that it's secure on both sides. If you have a screw loose, then the fan is going to wobble. And now we have our base plate on. You should have three wires sticking out. Sometimes you may have four, depending on whether or not you have a separate switch for your ceiling fan and your lights. But you're going to have a black wire, a copper wire, or a green wire 
and a white. The white is negative, the black is positive. So long as you have it off, you won't have a circuit. The copper or the green one is the grounding wire. Next, we're going to grab the biggest and heaviest component, which is going to be the motor to your fan. Typically, the motor has an opening here, so that way you can hang it from one side of the ceiling and then be able to screw it up without having to hold it. Okay, now we're ready to install the motor and connect the wires. In your packet, you should have three electrical caps and three nuts that will help anchor the motor to the base plate. So what you wanna do first is take off any rubber bands that are there to hold the wires in place. You'll see that there are typically four wires on the motor. Again, there's the green one, which is the ground or the copper wire. There's the white one, which is your negative. And then there's a black one and sometimes a blue one. If you have a separate switch to turn the ceiling fan on, isolated from the light, then you would want to match the black on black and typically the blue with an orange color. If not, what I'm going to end up doing is taking the blue and the black wire and twisting them together on the black wire. That way, as you switch on and off, it'll control the light and the ceiling fan. We find that hole that we have on the one side in the hook here. And this allows us hands free so that we can connect the wires. We have our electric caps here, right tight, left loose. So you'll want to twist the white and the white wire together clockwise with your fingers. Then take that cap and twist it until it is very secure. And you can gently tug on the white wire just to make sure it doesn't slip. Now we'll do the same thing for the grounding wire. Twist to the right. Take your cap and secure it over both tips, twisting until it's secure. Gently tug on it to make sure it doesn't come loose. And then finally, we're gonna take our black and our blue wire, twist them together around with the other black wire. All in the same direction, twist to the right, take our cap and twist until you feel it's tight and secure. Tug gently, just to make sure it doesn't come out. To reinforce it, we'll use our electrical tape. This will allow us to anchor the motor and put the cap on and not run the risk of the wires coming loose. So just a little strip of black electrical tape and wrap it around the caps and the wire to each of them. Now that that's done, you should have three nuts that you're going to mount the motor to the base plate. You want to feed it on with your hand first. So make sure that the wires are going to be flush with the ceiling and line up your screws and then hand thread the nut loosely on the one side and then do the same with the other two. Last but not least. From here, you can use an adjustable wrench or a 7 16th wrench or 7 16th socket wrench to tighten the nuts all the way to the base plate. This part is going to require some patience. It's a little tedious.
Make sure that all of these are secure. If you have any loose nuts, it's gonna wobble when you put the blades on and turn the fan on. And nobody likes a fan that's knocking or making noises or wiggling. Before we install the decorative cover around the top, what we wanna do is make sure that we've connected the wires properly. So we're going to take the light component and plug it in real quick and make sure that it works. The light component on your ceiling fan typically has a series of holes here and a little notch on one side, which will match up with the one that's in the ceiling. So it should only fit in one way. So we're gonna hook in the part here to the light. And make sure it snaps. If it snaps, you should be able to hands free it. And I've gone ahead and attached a light bulb here. So now we're going to check it and make sure that it works. I switched the power on. So if it works correctly, by pulling the middle pull cord here, I have light. And by pulling the outside cord, I have the motor. we have the comfort in knowing that the wiring is working. If for whatever reason it's not working, you'll want to revisit the wires and make sure that the connections are twisted around together and secured with the cap properly. Chances are you don't have a secure connection. Be sure to turn the light switch back off and or cut the breaker before moving on to the next step. Okay, our next step is going to be to install this decorative cover that goes around the motor. This particular one has four sets of screws on either side, but as you'll see, the screws are already in the anchor, so you'll need to unscrew one and loosen the other one, so that way we can shimmy it on there. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so in order to just install the decorative cap, I'm going to have to unscrew the screws that are already in the base plate. As I mentioned before, I only need to unscrew one of them and then loosen the other one so that way I can seat it. We just set our tiny screw down on our step ladder somewhere we can find it again. And do the same thing for the other side. Now we can put the decorative plate onto the base plate. You'll want to line up the ones for the loose screw on both sides. And then you should be able to twist it slightly to the right and that's going to hold it there and allow us to screw back in the two screws that we took out. This part can be the most challenging because you're dealing with tiny little screws. So be sure to have some patience and go slow. Leave it slightly loose before you fully tighten. This way, if you have to adjust the other side, you have a little wiggle room. Once you've got it secured, go ahead and tighten it on both sides. Now we're ready to install the fan blades, but first we have to assemble the fan blades together. So take apart your packaging to separate your fan blades. Be sure when you cut the cellophane plastic off that you do so carefully so that you don't scratch the fan blades themselves.
then you'll want to take apart the pieces that actually connect to the ceiling fan. Next, find the bag of screws that goes with the blades. They should be short and flat. This particular model of ceiling fan allows you to have reversible blades, so you can choose a dark green or a light green. For this house, we're going to be choosing a light green, in which case you're going to take the decorative end that's going to be facing down on the fan and make sure that it is on the side that you desire. On the back side here, you'll screw in the three decorative screws. You can either use the hand screwdriver or you can use a power tool, but just be careful when you use a power tool to go slow and gentle and only till it's tight or you can actually damage the blade. One down, just a few more to go. Have our blades assembled, we're going to assemble them to the fan. Typically, the fan has an opening on one area for you to be able to mount them. You'll line up the Phillips head screws that are on either side to the holes in the top, and then you can screw it in either using a Phillips head screwdriver or a power drill. Again, just be sure to go slow and have control if you're going to use a power tool so that way you don't over tighten and damage the blade. Use your handheld screwdriver here to tighten the rest of the screws before moving on to the next step. Now that we have them secured, we're going to mount the light fixture part, just like we did when we tested it. We'll want to remove the three screws that are already tightened into it, so that way when we mount it, we can reattach those screws. They're very tiny. So again, have patience and control when working with them. Now remember how we assembled this before by lining up the holes on the side that has the clip. That way we know it's secure. 
then it'll take a little bit of finesse to be able to wrap up all of the cords inside of here so that it mounts flush and the holes line up to reinsert the screws. This can be the most challenging part because now you have to try and reinsert these tiny little screws with your screwdriver. And if you're like me with long nails, you can take a little finesse. So have patience. If you drop them on the ground, take a minute, find them again, and start over. But don't give up. Don't tighten the screw all the way down until you've secured the other two screws. This way it gives you a little bit of wiggle room to line up the other holes. And once you have all three screws in, be sure to tighten them all the way around. Now it's time to install the shades. For these particular shades, they rest within three screws that have already been tightened down. So you'll want to loosen them all up. While holding the shade securely in one hand, you're going to line it up across the middle, pressing it all the way to the back, and then tighten up the three screws all the way around, but do so evenly. So screw in this one a little bit, then move to the next one and screw it in a little bit, and then the third one as well. This way it's centered all the way around. This will give it a more snug and secure fit. You don't have to forgive the noise in the background. We're having cabinets installed today too. All right, all that we have left is to put in the light bulbs. This particular fan came with LED light bulbs, which will help reduce our energy costs and last a longer time without having to replace. How many blondes does it take to screw in a light bulb? Just one. Our last decorative touch is to add the pull cord extensions. Time to see if it works. All right, drum roll please. And how about that? 
I hope you appreciated my tutorial and I hope it helps give you confidence and strength to want to try and do this yourself because we can do it too. I look forward to being able to share more tips and tricks with you as I myself learn on our remodel. Please be sure to like and follow me for more of these videos and also leave me a comment if there's anything else that you've ever wanted to learn regarding home repairs or remodel.